Well, welcome back to Tractor Talk with Gary. Once again, we're in Elkader, Iowa. We're visiting with Cleavis Kepler. He owns Royal Products, our steel dealer. You've got a couple exciting new chainsaws here I would like to hear about. Uh, yep, the, probably the biggest one we've been waiting for for a long time is that 500i, um, the MS500i. It's the, the world's first fuel injected chainsaw. Um, extremely powerful for what it weighs. So it's, it's very comfortable to run. The fuel injection does uh, have a little different throttle response than all the other mm -hmm. ones, but it, it's, it's impressive. Um, we waited a long time to get those and we finally have them in stock. So They were hard to come by. Weren't very, very much so. They were probably at least a year behind what they had expected to be able to hit the shelves in the U.S. because of popularity worldwide. Mm -hmm. That saw is still built in Germany, so mm -hmm. they, they got a hold of it first. So. <laughs> But yeah, it's, but it's, we needed it worse. Uh, the, yeah, it's not what they say. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's quite a saw. It's a um, couple specs on the thing. It's 4.83 cubic inch at 6.7 horsepower with a powerhead weight of only 13.9 pounds. So it's it, it's very impressive. So um, running the 3 8 chain with uh, anywhere from a 16 to a 36 inch bar. Most normally with our area is the 20 to 25 inch bar seems to be the good fit for it. Um, it, it does, it, it, it is not a cheap saw by any means. It does come in nearly $1,400 depending which bar is on it. But, Do you think um, that's going to come down? Uh, I would doubt it. Everything has okay. gone up just a little bit here in the mm -hmm. last year because of all the supply chain issues sure. and all that good sure. stuff. But, um, it, it fits in line with the, like the MS661 as far as the, the, the brute power horse saw, but um, that is uh, it's a little heavier. It's, it's, a, it's a hell of a saw, but it's a little heavier, and it comes mm -hmm. in about the $1,400 range also. So um, this would be classified not a homeowner saw? Oh, no. This is, this is a full, full professional yeah. type saw. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's, if, if, any, if anybody is a, a professional and... and you see somebody running one, ask if you can borrow it for just a little bit, just, just to get a taste of it. It's, they are quite something to run. They start just a little bit different, being fuel injected, injected right? no carburetor, no choking it. Mm -hmm. um, they do have a primer bulb on them, so you do have to pump the primer bulb manually to tell the system that it has fuel pressure. And then once you pump that and it starts, then the fuel pump takes care of everything itself. Um, but to start, it, you do have to push wow. the primer bulb every time. So. Um, but that's once once you do that, it's it's extremely smooth. Usually within the third pull, it's running smooth. There's no up and down like mm -hmm. a choke working type of thing. There's no switching levers. It just starts. Um, wow. So it, it's it's impressive. But um, maintenance wise, it's really pretty easy to work on. They they moved the they, they platform some of that off the TS 500i, which is the Smetsaw version with the with the same okay. same setup. But they rearrange the parts a little bit, so it's a little easier for us to if we have to replace an injector or something like that. Instead of it being an hour and a half project, it's about a twenty-minute project. So um, re redesign. You've got the HD two air filters on it, so they're washable. They last. They last quite a while, but they are washable also. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're, they're a good outfit. So they do have the decompression release on top for a little easier starting. The elasti start handle takes a little bit of the vibration jerk out of the rope when you're pulling on that. Um, otherwise and a vibration stuff like normal, and of course the chain brake like all the other saws have, so. It's a pretty smart looking unit, isn't it? It's very sleek. Very oh, wow. Sleek, so. Wow. Um, it does have the, the flip caps that everybody's, everybody's kind of used to those things by now. Um, um, yeah, I like those. Yeah, we have we have a few people that don't tend to get along with them the best, but most my most, dad never liked. Yeah, them. most people most people do real well. Um, the bar cover does have the capture nuts in it, so they don't you know when you take them loose, you don't drop them onto the ground. They they stay into the cover. So um, even if one vibrates loose or something, you don't lose them. So my MS one eighty is old enough; it's still got the caps that you stick the screwdriver. Yep, in. Yep, the one seventy and one eighties, and I guess the one eighty C. Oh, they yeah, still they, do. They still they? have the screw in caps. Okay. So. Um, I'm assuming it's a, a price point thing, but, um, but well, yeah. I notice like with my 250, it's the way the housing is. They're a little bit tighter than they are on the 390s, so yeah. maybe that's an issue that, yeah, that they just couldn't make them fit right. I, I would, uh, I would bet it's probably a price point thing because these the small ones, of course, have to do have to fit into the price tag. But um, you get up to the big saws, all the professional saws, they get all the cool stuff first. You know? Oh yeah, oh so, yeah. Um, that's that's the guys that pay the bigger price get that stuff. Sure. 
Um, but then we go to the, the 400, which is the latest one out. Um, this one right here. Yep, the MS400C. It is, it wow. is an M-tronic saw, so that means it's an electronically controlled carburetor. Um, it's, it fits more into the, the size wise of that 362 and the 462, wearing basically it's in the same chassis. Um, it's, it's big difference over those two saws. It has a magnesium piston in it. It's the first one with a magnesium piston. It's they can get a little bigger uh, displacement on it with a little less weight. Um, the, the magnesium is, is a little stronger than the aluminum, weighs less. So, mm -hmm. uh, of course, it costs more too, which is part of, part of that professional stuff. A um, couple specs on that one. It's in the 66.8 cc category, rated at 5.4 horsepower. Um, power head weight is only 12.8 pounds. Um, range on the bar is anywhere from a 16 inch, which would be pretty little for that kind of horsepower, up to a 25 inch bar, which would be a good fit for it. Mm -hmm. um, the 20 in our neighborhood is, is usually the most popular. But, um, that would run circles around my 390. With oh, it. for sure. And my 390, sure. is, is, that's been yeah. an incredible and it's the, saw. The, the interesting part of that is I think they weigh almost the same at 13.7 yeah. pounds, so well, it's actually a pound lighter. Um, it's, a, it's a pound lighter than a 391 with the, uh, what kind of horsepower? 4.4 versus the 5.4, so a horsepower more and a pound less. Wow. So yeah, if, if for the, the professionals, once again, that's a professional saw. Mm -hmm. For the professionals that are using it all day long, the one pound is a big deal. Oh yeah. yeah. For, oh, for five yeah. minutes, one pound isn't so big, but all day, one pound is a big deal. Um, and if you you are up in the tree using it, that weight is a big thing. Um, most of it is just uneven terrain. You know, mm -hmm. you don't always just get to stand in a parking lot and block wood up. You know, or right next to the wood furnace or whatever. You know, it's mm -hmm. um, you do have to wander around in, in uneven terrain, stand on hillsides, cutting trees down, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. where that that pound makes a difference. So, um, once again, a lot of the same features as the 500i with the elastic start rope, the decompression release. Um, they do have the flip caps on there, and that also has the capture bonus on the on the side cover. So, um, good little saw. Comes more in around the nine hundred and ten dollars. It looks like with mm -hmm. the twenty inch bar on it. So, um, good good fit between that three sixty two and that four sixty two. On these two, how big of a bar can you go on them? Um, by rights, you can bolt the thirty six inch bar on it. It has the same bar mount. Um, I would not advise it. It's not. Um, Performance wise, it's not going to behave very well. That's, more chain to buy, more chain to That's way too much bar for that yeah. power head. So yeah. um, they say most most of the time the 25 is a good fit for it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it, it just kind of throws it all out of balance, and um, it just it just isn't a good fit. You know, on my 390, I have a 20 inch bar on that, and I find that does. Yeah, I cut some big stuff. Yeah, that that does a, a really good job. Yep, the, ba the balance is really real good. good as far as just carrying it and mm -hmm. stuff too. It's There's not plenty of no power. Stuff. Yep, we we have gone. When we talk about the 25 bars and the steel's lightweight bars up here in the end is something that's relatively new um, okay. as of a couple years ago. Um, they've been very popular. They're roughly $50 more per bar than its, than its counterpart that is the solid bars. But um, because of the weight savings, again, people are really liking them. Um, the 25 has been extremely popular and a little tough to get this year, but um, yeah, they, they have been very, very popular. Yeah, nice, nice fit for these power heads that are becoming a little lighter and going mm -hmm. to a longer bar without the nose always being so stinking heavy. So you pick it up and you expect it's going to be that high performance yep. of a saw, and you fool. Yeah, yep, yeah, it, it does make a difference. So then our twenty-eight light bar is actually lighter than our twenty regular bar. Wow. Yeah, it's it's quite a big difference. So wow. Um, yeah. Maybe to be the same could be expected. No, it's actually lighter. lighter. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So. Incredible. So we had a lot of interest in these? The 500 eyes, yes, very, very much so. Mm -hmm. um, the 400, we just got those a couple of months ago. Um, we just sold our first one yesterday. So it's it's getting into firewood cutting season, you know, oh, yeah. type of thing. It's You don't move too many great big saws unless you have a big storm or it's getting cold. So mm -hmm. um, the the summer has been pretty hot here, so it's it um, not so moving so many big saws during the summer, but um, firewood cutting season's coming, they'll, they'll move, so yeah. We've had a couple storms and a bunch of trees down too, and that gets people's attention. Uh, uh yes, yes, yep, yeah. Last last year was a, a bigger area of a lot of trees down. There was mm -hmm. a lot of interest in chainsaws. This year, there's been a few storms, not as much ge geography covered with each mm -hmm. storm. So, 
Um, I think there's there's a lot of saws out in the world right now because of last year, but uh, uh, it's no, they're, yeah, they're, really. they're good property. Good tools are always good property. So steel's got an awfully nice lineup. Everything from the $190 up to the, you know, I guess mm -hmm. an, an MS881, which is a very big saw. Um, you know, floating in the two thousand dollar range, they kind of got one for pretty much everybody's job. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've we've been real happy with with what they what they come out with in the last few years, and the customers seem to be very happy with them as far as performance and and all that kind of thing. So, um, like I said, people love buying good tools. So, yeah, good toys. Yep, good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we we convince our wives they're tools. Uh. <laughs> Well, very nice. Well, thanks, Gladys, for taking the time to show me these. I'm, these are, uh, on the internet, they're really popular. A lot of people are, there's a lot of buzz about these. Yeah, these are, yeah. The reviews, the reviews on the 500i have been and very good. I was just looking at those yesterday mm -hmm. on Steel's website, and um, there was there was one that was very un, unhappy with his. Um, the nice thing I liked about that is Steel did reach out to them directly, and, and the dealer, they were having some sort of mechanical problems with it, but... Um, they they really have been very well they received. So, got on top of it and um, sold it. Yep, yep. So there's there's, no. there's two Swedish guys that have a channel, and I right now I cannot remember what the channel was. Yeah, they were the first ones that I know of to get their hands on that, mm -hmm. and they were just raving about yeah. it. They it's, just they thought it was. If you ever get a chance, and some, some guy that's yeah. got one, he's got one, ask if he can borrow it for a few minutes. It's they are phenomenal. To run, Distracting, so. you know. No, just, <laughs> just ask. They'll, they'll uh -huh. you know, they like showing off their stuff as well as the oh, next I'm sure. Day, so. um, but yeah, they're they're quite something. So. I would if I had it. Yeah. So. But. but the other the other things Steel's coming out with, you know, to plug a few other things. The um, the battery stuff. But I know last last time I talked with you, we talked a little bit of battery chainsaw. Mm -hmm. um, that that line hasn't changed a whole lot, but they've added more tools to the battery stuff. And one of them that we just really really like is the H, or it's it's the one thirty five powerhead. So it's on the combi stuff. It's it's a KM one thirty five. Mm -hmm. KMA A is the battery stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a KMA one thirty five, but they've utilized that powerhead on a dedicated trimmer and. Yes, Friday, we ordered our first pole saws with that power head on it. Wow. Um, so that, we've, we've had very good reviews on that power head. So, um, but what, the, what they're doing a lot of it is they're taking a gas powered tool, removing the gas power head, and they're putting this one on it, um, which I would think for manufacturers, that's a great thing, um, but it balances well. Like we talked about with the chainsaws, mm -hmm. how do they balance? How mm -hmm. do they feel in your hands? That one has been just impressive. So we'll be we'll be really kind of excited. Uh, in a couple of days we should be getting our HTA one thirty five, and and it's an extendable, so it'll mm -hmm. reach up to you know fourteen fifteen feet or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm wow. thinking that will be well received as well. But um, when we did the other interview, mm -hmm. yeah, we got into the electric stuff. When I picked up the trimmer, when I got my hands on it, I was hooked. Yep. I got to have one of these. Yep. There, and I I use mine a lot. Yeah. The, the battery stuff is it's it's not going to replace the horsepower of a five hundred. No, no. But there's not now. Anyway. There's an awful lot of other jobs that they take over extremely well. Um, Who knows down the road what battery technology is going to be? If, if they can get the weight down, that would that would be the kicker to that horsepower. They need mm -hmm. they would need more battery. Batteries are heavy, so mm -hmm. um, yeah. If in in due time, yeah, it's very possible. Mm -hmm. but, um, right now, the the fuel injected is. The new thing so and it's it's impressive so would that be something no more mixing fuel and uh well there you know, so, something less to have to carry to the yeah, woods yeah 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 that would be something but um there there are some new battery technologies that are coming out as well that they keep telling us about you know and the same thing like that one all the cool mm -hmm. stuff we gotta wait just a little bit <laughs> longer but um, it should it should be quite something but yeah for for now fuel injected is the new thing in the chainsaw lineup and and it's it's impressive. It, it really does show off as much as they were hyping it up to be. It is all of that. So, I know years ago, I bought a, it was 86, I bought a Ford F-150, brand new. The next year, they came out with fuel injection. Mm -hmm. And that 306 cylinder that they made for years, it was such a tough engine, when they fuel injected that, they woke that thing up. Yeah. It thought it was a V8. Yep, yep. It's, it's, what a difference. It, yeah, exactly. What, what a difference. A difference. Yep. And you know more, it, it, a lot better economy, it right. cheaper to run. You're right, and it's cleaner emissions wise too because of mm -hmm. the metering of the fuel is a little bit better. So, um, every, everything about it is good, and it, it's say it's it's performing extremely well. Um, being 
that much lighter is a chassis versus like that 661. Um, mm -hmm. The 661 is a very, very well received saw because it's been tested over. I mean, loggers love that thing. Um, and of course, they live in a in a rough environment. You know, trees, oh, yeah. trees pinch and stuff, throwing oh, yeah. around all that. Um, that saw holds up extremely well. Losing that much weight on a 500i, we'll see how you know. We give it five six years on a single unit, and we'll see how long it holds all that stuff up. Mm -hmm. But um, so far, so good. I mean, guys have been using it just as hard. They'll they'll put down the the 661s. They'll grab the 500i because it's a lot lighter. So, but if they get ripping and tearing on the handles, I don't. You know, we'll, we'll see how well they hold up. But. So far, so far, so good. So, if you ever have a problem, you don't have the shelf space to put one. I will, I will I'm gladly sure, help I'm you sure, out. There. No. So no, we have a bigger trouble trying to get them normally than. Yeah. Uh, but but they did, they did pop up uh, live on on our ordering side of things here a couple months ago. They finally let them out, and um, otherwise yeah. it was yes. it was otherwise it was a beg your territory manager. <laughs> so, um, oh, but, very nice, yes. very nice. Well, Cletus, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You bet. Now I've got something else to drool over here. There you go. There you go.